Welcome top news today. Published 1700 est, the 11th of January 2018 updated 1741 est, the 11th of January 2018 Donald Trump has scrapped plans to visit Britain next month, the Mail understands. The US President was expected to make his first trip to the UK since entering office, but government officials have been told he has gone cold on the idea. No new date has been offered, raising the prospect of a major diplomatic snub. One senior source suggested Mr. Trump, who was expected to officially open the new U.S. Embassy in London, cancelled because he was unhappy about the arrangements and the scale of the visit. The reversal comes despite Mr. Trump telling Theresa May last month that he would come. Donald Trump has scrapped plans to visit Britain next month, the Mail understands. Government sources have been told the president has gone cold on the idea President Trump, pictured here with his wife Melania, may have cancelled the trip because he was unhappy about the arrangements and the scale of the visit. The abrupt reversal comes despite Mr. Trump telling Theresa May in a phone call last month that he would visit Britain in the new year to Britain in the new year. Preparations were advanced for a working visit to officially open the embassy, but the Mail understands this role will now be performed by Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. Mr. Trump was also scheduled to hold talks with Mrs. May in No. 10, with February 26 and 27 marked in the diary. Downing Street had hoped to confirm the dates this week. The president was not due to meet the Queen until a full state visit at a later date, and a second source said the lack of bells and whistles and royal involvement next month's visit may have discouraged him. Mr. Trump has previously expressed concern about the likelihood of mass protests. Last year he told Mrs. May he did not want to go ahead with a visit until the British public supported it. The Prime Minister and the President clashed in November when she criticised his decision to retweet anti-Muslim propaganda from a Farid group, Britain First. In a rare public rebuke, she said, I am very clear that retweeting from Britain First was the wrong thing to do. Mr Trump hit back on Twitter, saying, don't focus on me, focus on the destructive radical Islamic terrorism that is taking place within the United Kingdom. He added, we're doing just fine. Mr Trump was due to officially open the new US Embassy in London pictured. The Mail understands this role will now be performed by Secretary of State Rex Tillerson. President Trump clashed with Mrs. May in November when she criticised his decision to retweet anti-Muslim propaganda from a Farid group, Britain First. The prospect of mass protests during any visit were raised last month after Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn urged his followers to turn out in force if Mr. Trump visited the other clashed again when Mrs. May criticised his decision to recognise Jerusalem as Israel's capital, calling it unhelpful in terms of prospects for peace in the region. However, following a phone call between the pair on December 19, officials were bullish about the visit taking place. Their conversation was described as genial. The prospect of mass protests were raised last month after Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn urged his followers to turn out in force if Mr Trump visited the UK to send him a clear message. More than a million people signed a petition last year calling for the state visit to be cancelled. Officials have already moved into the £750 million US Embassy near Battersea Power Station in South London. An official opening involving the two leaders would have dispelled any concerns about the special relationship between Britain and the US, and boosted hopes of a post-Brexit trade deal. President Trump took part in a high-profile 24-hour visit to France that was topped off with a military parade on Bastille Day. Saudi Arabia the president was welcomed with a bouquet of flowers at King Khalid International Airport in the capital Riyadh. As he arrived, he was flanked by horsemen carrying Saudi and American flags. He even held King Salman's hand as he was welcomed by the Saudi royal court. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his wife Sarah welcomed the President and First Lady Melania to their palace. Mr Netanyahu said they had the house painted especially for the visit, and he gave the Trumps a 150-year-old bottle of wine as a gift. French M. Trump's 24-hour visit was topped off with a military parade on Bastille Day. Mr. Trump, who was guest of honour at the celebrations, enthusiastically applauded the soldiers and tanks on the Champs-Élysées. He later shared a 29-second handshake with French President Emmanuel Macron. Poland an enthusiastic reception as people were bussed into Warsaw and chanted Donald Trump throughout his speech. Germany the reception was not as warm, with protesters lining the streets as the president attended the G20 summit. 
Japan Mr. Trump was welcomed with an elaborate palace ceremony and a round of golf with one of the country's champion players. South Korea President Moon Jae-in repeatedly invoked Mr. Trump's campaign slogan by saying he was making America great again. China President Xi Jinping personally showed Mr. Trump around the imperial palace. Last night, Downing Street refused to comment. A spokesman said, an invitation for a state visit has been extended and accepted. The U.S. Embassy said no firm date had been announced and suggested the president was still expected this year. On Tuesday, the White House confirmed Mr. Trump will attend the World Economic Forum in the Swiss resort of Davos. The event, from January 23 to 26, brings together the world's economic and political elites. Mr. Trump has been battling the fallout from a highly critical book. He tried to ban Fire and Fury, by Michael Wolff, but it soared to the top of the bestseller lists. The book claimed officials around the president questioned his intelligence and fitness for office. In the Commons this week, Labour frontbencher Liz McInnes urged the government to withdraw the invitation for a state visit, calling it wretched. She said it should be scrapped to save Her Majesty from that unpleasant-sounding ordeal, but Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson said, I think Her Majesty the Queen is well capable of taking this American president, or indeed any American president, in her stride.